I feel like when when we think of David Penn music, it is so you know identifiable by the piano and the gospel vocals and upbeat vibes. I mean, even going back to some of the early releases in the nineties, like gypsy rhythm and keep on rising. Like it's always had that upbeat feeling. I'm wondering if you can just kind of tell us about, you know, your philosophy on house music and why you've kind of went down that path. Well, um, yeah, I, I, to be honest, those were my, my first influences. So, you know, the, the early house of the, you know, the beginnings of the house of the nineties, uh, was my first um, step into music, you know. I, I started as, as a David Penn in 1999, but I had I made another project since 1992. So all these years I've been I was working with different projects. Uh, one of them was really famous was K Dog the Night Train. Um, but at that time I was just looking for what, uh, what 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 direction to take, you know, because I was not DJ. And as I soon I started to DJ, uh, I started as a producer. And when I started to DJ, I was feeling, you know, I was understanding more what to do, you know, because at the beginning, when you're a producer, I was following more uh, another DJ's uh, ideas, you know, and yeah, and then I decided that I wanted to to take my my way alone, and yeah, and it's history, you know, it's many years uh, around, uh, and, you know, it, it's it's amazing that I've been. All these years, you know, especially when the EDM came, that was a strange period for house music. I mean, must disappear. But at, la at last, it helped me to 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 continue stronger. And, and yeah, I'm I'm really happy right now that people can know me from 20 years ago or from uh, one year ago. So it's good. It's good. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious, are there any kind of artists or genres of music that you find yourself listening to a lot out that fall outside of the dance world? Well, I, I was always really influenced and in, in uh, soul, funky. Um, uh, my early years with my with my father was playing old time music, Stevie Wonder, uh, I don't know, Jackson 5, um, Earth, Wind and Fire. So that's what that were my, my early inspirations. And I feel in some protections of me, some touches of, of this kind of music, you know, this is maybe what more influenced to me in the, in the early years. And at the end, I think all this, this kind of music is still in my, in my head. And when I want to make some house music, I, I always try to take some organic thing from the past or, you know, always to, to keep some uh, harmonies, more songs than really club tracks you know this is what i try always to make songs yeah absolutely and i mean it's definitely heard through your style and it's important i think especially recently people have really been finding that line between not every track i make has to be like a club ready banger you know i can make something people want to listen to just walking down the street of course, um, of course. i think that i think the same but honestly lately all the tracks working so good so i'm <laughs> i'm really really impressed maybe, maybe it's because i i feel more comfortable than ever with my music i i just express myself i follow my instinct and uh, people like it so it's fantastic time for me you know and at the end i'm deciding what to do or what or what not to do right now you know i have the luck to to choose you can choose the to make a remix of something but especially if i can do something new you know it's not about the quantity maybe because i have many offers but i mean not all the records you know for much effort that i can do if the good if the, if the original song is not good i'm not inspired so this is the point if the, the music inspires me you know i try to to take it to another level <laughs> yeah absolutely i'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about just growing up in spain and um what the uh yeah no no, no problem at all um just what the scene is like there, you know, I think that when, especially people from America think about the dance scene in Spain, they often just immediately go to Ibiza, but obviously, you know, that's kind of its own thing. Um, so if you could just tell us about, you know, where you came up and what that scene was like. Well, uh, uh, to be honest, in Spain, there are not many house uh, producers, I mean, uh, DJs, uh, producers. I, I was always um uh, you know i was always thinking um more outside of of, of spain no i 
in Ibiza, of course, uh, you know, it's one of my best uh, destinations. O -o normally, o always my music has been playing there since the 90s. So, yeah, you know, I I love, you know, whatever whatever with Ibiza. But, you know, during this two years that we, we've been locked down, um, you know, it's true that, that it, that it's, um, it's a different era, you know, let's, let's see how, how it's going and things are starting now in Spain, but uh, I think my style is more European. I mean, I have, I have sometimes influences, more Latin influences or, or soul influences, but I'm, I, to be honest, I'm, it's not, uh, I, I, there are not many, many DJs that are doing, actually there are more new ones like my friend KPD. Or you know, I, there are uh, some producers that that I do in house right now, but in the past it was more techno or tech house, you know, not not more into into my my thing. So at the end, I I always feel like someone in in a, in the wrong country, maybe you know. But uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm recognized here, and I, I can say nothing wrong, you know. But honestly, it's not my style. Is not something especially from Spain. No? I think it's international. Absolutely. Are there any places that, you know, you've had the opportunity to play, whether it's Europe or North America or South America that have just had kind of an incredible energy that maybe you didn't expect? Oh, well, many, many times, of course. Um, I don't know. For example, in the United States, I played many times um, and I, I have good remembers from from many places, uh, especially in Miami when the, when we, you know, in the winter music conference you know that when the early years of that was really fun because uh where parties all around uh, the the connection was really good and and always i've been um when i when i play in the united states i i i i feel that the people is knowing me more and more uh for example in south america in argentina the people love my music too it's curious because they they still ask me to play tracks from 15 years ago and it's still the people know it, you know, all the, all, also the young guys uh, being crazy and say, oh, it's too old to play. Yeah, yeah, play it. And everybody knows it. It's like, come on, it's really old track and the people uh, continue playing. No? So it's, it's really good. I, I mean, it, it's not about the cities. It's sometimes about the party. I play in, in, in different parts of the world and some, some places are fantastic and some places not. But uh, um, I, I, to be honest, I don't, I don't have much more bad, uh, you know, remembrance have about that. Always it's, it's a good place to go, but especially when the people know you. One of my favorites was in Croatia uh, last summer because uh, with the Fekte uh, Festival was amazing, especially after two years of lockdown was incredible. So this is the most recent high, high glide. Awesome. Well, I'm super glad that you just mentioned Defected because obviously had to go there and ask you about them. You know, you've been releasing with the guys for, I think, over 20 years now. Um, and even, you know, especially so in the last few years. Uh, what does that label kind of mean to the culture of house music? And what is it about them that, you know, drew you in for so long? Well, it's, it's curious because I was releasing tracks, yeah, from maybe 18 years ago was the first one they released from me and and but when the EDM came about I don't know 2011 2010 I remember the music changed a lot also the fact that changed uh, went to a little bit more um, underground um, and people went to EDM or went to techno and I was in the middle like what to do you know because I, I didn't want to decide I, I just want to to continue making house music, but th those years were were a little bit uh, hard for me. About you know, I, I I didn't like the music that was I was listening out, and and you know, and, and all my, the people was remembering my old tracks, and I say I don't want to be an old glory. Like oh, your 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 last tracks, you know, your old tracks were better, you know. So I thought, okay, I'm not inspired with the music of now, and and I looked into the studio. I've been about a year maybe uh, going every time as I could uh, trying to find my my sound you know I mean because I had a sound during the 2000s but when everything changed uh, I was you know trying to find and, and I just started to, to think about what I would like to do a part of uh, what 
it was trendy or not because on that time it was more deep house and deep house sometimes i like but it's not my thing you know my, my music is normally energetic uh happiness you know and and i just try to try to to follow my my instinct and yeah it happened again in and i'm so happy that that are the fact that also called me uh again and they want me to to be in the you know with, with them and of course it's my favorite label so i i, I was really agreed that uh, i could be releasing tracks so long and, and especially now to be you know again on there and with good really good perspectives perspective with the with all the releases that i've been doing and the next ones that will come Awesome. Yeah. It, you know, I've always been a fan of their label, but it's been, it was kind of amazing to watch how they were able to, you know, stay relevant and kind of increase the brand during the pandemic without the shows and just all of the live streams and just kind of that energy from the fans. Um, you know, I'm just wondering kind of on the technical side of things, are there any pieces of hardware in the studio or like software plugins that you find yourself kind of going to a lot? Uh, uh, that, that, I, that I use more, you mean, or what? Do you yeah, mean? yeah, like that you that you just really love to use. Well, um, actually, I'm I'm producing with uh, uh, DAW with the DAW uh, called uh, Studio One from Presonus. Um, it's not so known, but it's re really easy for me to to work with. Uh, the workflow is really fast, and the sound is really good. Uh, and the pl uh, plugins. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm using many times uh, sub boom bass, or um, for my for my bass, or also um, how it's called uh, real bass. Uh, I think that from from waves. Uh, I'm taking it out, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, also, I, I use a lot of of um, try to to make my own libraries. You know, sometimes I take a, a, a loop. But I change with another, you know. I change different parts of the loops with another's. So I, at the end, I create my my loops with with audio loops. I mean, but all the part of, of the musical thing I, I play by, I don't know, contact or depends how how I'm feeling. Also M1 core M1, it's a classic one, but I normally use also for for many of my pianos or or for uh, some sounds. But at the end, I'm not using too many many things. You know, at the end. The important thing is is try to 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 find a way to make to make something more or less organic, but you know that that can uh, work well in the flow. You know uh, that with a strong a strong drums, but at the end keeping the the you know the the, the music. You know, so I, I, sometimes I I'm not uh, or sometimes I I start with one plugin and I find one sound, but I'm not really into you know I, I love to. Every record try to to find new ones, you know. For example, for pianos, I use another one which is called True Pianos that have good pianos too. So yeah, but every track I start from the beginning and I I just uh, follow my my instinct. But yeah, I, I this is the most I use normally. Awesome, yeah. No, I, and I appreciate you saying that because I think sometimes it's like it's gotten so crazy with all the gear and tech now and and sometimes it's better to just keep it a little simple a lot of people love to have like 30 different synths in the studio and it can be overwhelming yeah. no i also also i it's curious when i do some master class or something like that I, I show my projects and i don't use many compressors and many things it, i i feel that if something sounds good don't you don't need to i mean a little eq but sometimes i i see i see tutorials for people that it's they made they put a lot of things and I think it sometimes distort the the, the, the sound or, or, or how I how I feel you know sometimes I think oh maybe my tracks uh, have a little uh, are, sounds a little bit more noisy not, not as, as clear but sometimes when you clear it too much it it loses the you know the the, the sound or the the energy you know so at the end I'm, I'm I only use uh, but sometimes, as I said, I, I talk too much. I, and as I say in masterclass, I start like, oh, this has nothing. This has a little EQ. This has a little compression. So I'm not, not crazy about, about that. No, after that, I, I like 
delays and you know to to, to work with the delays to make uh, special effects but but yeah I'm, I'm not using many many gear at the end <laughs> awesome you know, it, it, it's one thing i think that i've been noticing in the last couple of years is just like the rise of the artist driven label and it, it feels like almost everybody kind of has a label of their own now you founded urbana records pretty early on into your career um, I'm just wondering kind of why you wanted to start a label and what are some of the challenges that, you know, you faced uh, just kind of running it and getting it off the ground? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, when I when I started with Urbana was in 2003 and that era, it was uh, vinyl, right? And so when I was releasing a track, for example, in the United States, it was really complicated for European people to find that record, you know, because on that time, it was more, much more difficult to find the music. So at the end, one record was European, one record was American. And at the end, I say, OK, I, I, why, I don't, uh, why don't I make my own uh, label uh, releasing my music and, and the people can find more of my, uh, the most of my productions on my own label, you know, because for me, it was much easier uh, and, and also easier for, for the people that follow me. You know? So I always use the Urbana like um, not like a business. Real, really, I don't um, release many many records. I only release when when it's something that I think that is interesting. You know, uh, sometimes I can release two in a month, and sometimes I can release one in six months. But it's not the you know the good thing is that um, with these uh, differences of you know of release or not. Uh, it's really good when when a new record comes. Uh, it normally goes with, with, with in the charts, um, and this is really a small label because it's me. You know, it's it's not a big promotion. It's not a big thing, but I feel good when when I when I see that the, the people understand the philosophy. You know that they uh, at least if they listen an Urbana record, they will know that it's something that you know could be special, maybe for you or for not. But it's not something like you do in two days and oh, okay, let's let's see. Somebody will like it. No, no, no. Normally, when I release it, because something is something at least especially special for me. Absolutely. No, no, I mean, I think it's important just having that quality control. Um, you know, you've had this obviously unique career in that you've gotten to experience kind of the evolution of how dance music has you know invaded the culture and become more mainstream and then fallen back a little. You know, coming up in the 90s and experiencing it then uh, compared to now, are there any really major changes that, you know, you've seen in the last few years? And where do you think we're kind of headed? Well, it's true. In the 90s, it was uh, quite different, you know, because there was not many information about, uh, you know, it was uh, newspapers. It was, but, but at least I remember I was going to, to play to some places that maybe, the only people that know me was the DJ, you know, because it was the people that buy the records and the people go to the club and, and, and they enjoy a lot and it was fantastic. It was not that era, I mean, I mean, a part of the big names that are in this, in this scene, of course, but for many of us, we were, uh, we've been uh, doing well, but it, we didn't been uh, too, too famous, you know, many, as I said, normally it was because the, 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 the DJ know my mu new main music, so that's why they booked me. You know? the, the difference now is that, you know, the people, uh, it's, uh, they, they easily can access to, to your music. Um, you know, they connect with Spotify and they can see all my music really fast, really easy. And now I feel the last years that more and more people come to my shows, especially for me. You know, so this is the main difference. I mean, in the past, then the people uh, didn't ask for tracks to the DJ. You know, sometimes in the era, not not many times, but sometimes in this era, the, the people want to listen that song or that. When it's a track from me, I don't care. It's okay. I play the track. <laughs> but when when it, they ask you for for different music, it's like okay, yeah, I don't like this thing. You know. <laughs> that is things that happen, you know. But uh, uh, the good thing is not I, I'm still keeping the same energy and in what I do and when I play and and especially after those those two years, I, I was really missing to play out, you know. Because at the beginning it was good for me. I was touring a lot and I say, oh, perfect to be in the studio. I was really productive last year, so for me it was good. But uh, when when this year started, it was like, come on, I need I need some action, you know. 
and and I'm really happy that I am starting again touring and I, I feel alive again, you know, and because it's really important to have those both, this both uh, sides, you know, the, the producer and the DJ. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it seems like in the last couple of years, uh, especially with the shutdown, it's been an interesting opportunity for artists to almost, you know, showcase themselves even more when you don't have that chance to play shows, you have to work twice as hard to get your name out there. I'm wondering if there's anybody that's, you know, come up in the last couple of years that you think is just really making great music. Well, I mean, um, there are many, many people that is, that is the, the main thing that I feel many times is that the, the people normally take, um, you know, one direction and they follow it. It's good. You know, I always have my, my own sound, but I always try not to be obvious, you know? So the problem is sometimes, uh, especially new, new producers that have success, uh, it's really easy that they uh, use the formula too much, you know? So that's what I try to, 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 to not, you know? But um, I don't know, the, maybe there's the last, I mean, Purple Disco Machine was doing a really well job. Farrakh Don is releasing really good music. Um, John Summit, for example, is, is, is a good one that burned really, really fast in the last, in the last time. So I think, uh, yeah, it was a good opportunity to listen to other, other DJs. But uh, as, as I said at the beginning, for me, it was really good. But uh, after that, I was needing more inspiration on, on something, you know, because at the end, if you stay the whole day in the studio, it's nice, but you need, you know, to 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 leave to for for then express on your music, you know. So that's the that's the point. But for me, it was really good because it was really productive, and and you know, and and I think it's good that uh, yeah. I, uh, on the other hand, the problem was that all the tracks that from last year, I, I'm playing it this year, you know, because it's like okay, it sounds like old, but it was not, not many times played, you know, out. <laughs> but for me, it's okay, because the people like to listen to my music. So uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's probably a tough balance, and there's so much new music that's come out that's really great, and you're trying to figure out, like, what to play, what not to play when you have these limited times. Uh, yeah. You know, just kind of wrapping up, I just want to ask uh, what's in store for you for the rest of the year, if you have any music that you're planning to release. Um, and and then, you know, just you've had this long, successful career. Uh, is there anything that you're kind of still try striving towards accomplishing? Or for you, is it just, I want to enjoy this. I want to just keep making music and playing parties. <laughs> well, um, uh, the, the most, uh, the, the best thing right now in, in, in my career is that I feel, as I said at the beginning, that I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, uh, doing what I like, you know, it's, it's, just expressing myself and and it's, I'm feeling really good, you know, because the people understand me. And so I, I put not too much uh, a stress on me. I said, okay, when, when it's, I, I don't want to be in a hurry finishing the music. And at the end, I prefer to take more time, but be sure on, on everything that I, that I release. Uh, yeah, what I have to, for, for next month, I'm, I'm doing five maybe four or five tracks that are still in process with singers with uh, musicians that i'm working on it yet you know um especially for for defected we i've been last week in the in their studios uh, preparing some new tracks with singers with writing uh, camp so was really good uh, also i have a track with uh, ferric don that hope to be released at end of the year another with my my friend, what I, which is KPD, a Spanish uh, DJ producer that he made also uh, that track called um, Engano, that it was, it's really big right now here in, in, in Europe. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be busy and also starting to tour again, uh, crazy. <laughs> so it's like, I need some training because I'm, I'm starting like two to, have, to 100, no? but I'm happy to be back and yeah, many many projects are coming, and especially I, I will I, I will try not to you know I will always try to to keep the quality as much and and only release that the tracks that really can can do something, especially for me. Awesome. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. This was really great, and you know I'm a big fan of yours, so love talking to you and hearing your story. And uh, 
looking forward Thank to all that so new, much. looking forward to the new music and hopefully we'll uh see yeah. you state see you state uh stateside yeah, I'm, soon i'm going this weekend i go uh washington friday saturday miami and sunday i go to la so yeah i'll be there i'm also another tour in november so yeah can't wait to be back in the states awesome we're looking forward to having you man you have a good day okay thank you very much thanks cheers. man cheers <laughs>